What comes to mind when you think about public transportation? Crowded cars full of angry passengers? Broken air conditioning in the hot summer months? Major delays that can ruin your day? While all these things may be true, public transportation is critical to our American way of life. Passenger rail moves more than 15 million Americans every day, creating thousands of manufacturing jobs in the United States. These transit systems are vital to our country's economic growth and development. But have you ever wondered who is responsible for building this critical infrastructure? Who has the blueprints and knows the ins and outs of the cars and our rail networks? Who has access to your information when you connect to the onboard Wi-Fi? The truth is, the United States relies on foreign companies to provide this infrastructure. Manufacturers include French company Alstom, German conglomerate Siemens, Canadian company Bombardier, and Japanese rail company Hitachi. But one company, China CRRC Corp, is dominating the railway vehicle market. Unlike its competitors, CRRC is a state-owned enterprise, receiving financial backing from the Chinese government. Over the past several years, the company has won significant contracts to manufacture transit cars in major American cities, including Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia, and has built assembly facilities in Illinois and Massachusetts. And Governor Baker said he sees the facility attracting more business in the future. I have a feeling this is going to become a, a really significant flagship for manufacture and assembly of uh, rail cars here in the U.S. Because they're backed by the Chinese government, CRRC can easily win these contracts by grossly underbidding their competitors. Our rail system is a strategic asset, a bedrock strategic asset, which if it were dominated by China, would turn into a crippling vulnerability. China comes in, offers massive subsidies, underbids all competitors. This is not the way the U.S. does business. In 2015, China announced its Made in China 2025 plan, which essentially seeks to dominate global industries. The same year, China merged two of its largest rail rolling stock corporations to create CRRC. It immediately became the world's largest rail company. CRRC claims to control 83% of the global rail market and has tweeted its intent to conquer the remaining 17%. In Australia, China has already overtaken the rail manufacturing industry by acquiring or kicking out all its competitors, with other markets likely to follow suit. CRRC's advantage in the passenger rail sector threatens to destroy its competition, leading to a market monopoly with chilling implications. If the Chinese government can own such a critical space of American infrastructure, it can exert significant leverage against American interests. Even more sinister are the implications for our national security. Modern rail cars that feature smart technology have made commuting safer and more efficient and have greatly improved passenger experience. But it has also made our public transit systems vulnerable to attack. In an interconnected world and in the internet of things, you're going to have rail systems in the very near future that are so interconnected that they allow avenues for collection. The Chinese can use that access to degrade our system here in the United States, which would upset things, particularly on the economic and financial side. Connected infrastructure presents potentially target-rich environments for ill-intentioned cyber actors. For example, a bad actor could use malicious code to lock down and disable a critical system and demand payment as ransom for unlocking it, a common attack known as ransomware. A terrorist group might hack infrastructure to cause accidents and sow fear. Countries such as China, Iran, North Korea, or Russia might seek to use smart connected infrastructure as a platform for espionage. We have real concerns about the ownership of CRRC, with so many members of their board being members of the Communist Party and former members of the Chinese military, all who have been involved in espionage operations against the United States. There's every reason to believe they will continue to do so if they have the opportunity by building our transit rail cars. If we hearken back to the Equifax breach, 
that revealed substantial data on 150 million Americans. It has been determined that it was the Chinese military that were behind that data breach. Once again, it's part of an overall overarching program directed by Chinese national security elements designed to penetrate systems and collect personal private, corporate, and financial data on a good majority of Americans. The threats imposed by CRRC go beyond national security implications. CRRC paints itself as a major job creator in the United States, and the company has hired a swarm of DC insider lobbyists to paint a positive picture of CRRC to American lawmakers. The company claims they're creating new jobs for Americans. We're definitely bringing benefits for the task taxpayers here. In reality, any manufacturer winning a procurement would be creating new jobs. And while CRRC's rail cars may be assembled in the U.S., the majority of rail cars are sourced and shipped from China. We must respect the dignity of work and encourage foreign investment. But this is no ordinary foreign investment. Our workers and firms in the supply chain are not competing with a company in CRRC or BYD. They are competing with an entire country. Overall, this causes major disruption to the market, leading to long-term consequences for productivity and efficiency. If CRRC were to dominate the United States rail market as it did in Australia, it would impact nearly 65,000 jobs. State-owned enterprises that win rail stock procurements displace American jobs and damage American GDP. In Massachusetts in particular, CRRC promised to create hundreds of local jobs, but now faces questions about who is actually filling these roles. Public records reveal CRRC has filed for dozens of H-1B visas to bring workers from China rather than using qualified local workers. These records also show alarming discrepancies in pay between the American workforce and temporary Chinese employees. CRRC is not the first Chinese company to make headlines in the United States. The success of Netflix's documentary American Factory has raised public awareness of the clash between Chinese and American business interests and operations. American Factory focuses on Fuyao, a Chinese auto glass manufacturer that opened a facility in the Dayton, Ohio area in 2014. The film documents the American workers' attempt to organize and combat increasingly harsh working conditions. The American workforce quickly realizes that their new management does not fully embrace labor rights as they do. The promised revitalization of a depressed American manufacturing town is not, in fact, a dream come true. Like Fu Yao, CRRC has received critical reviews from its workforce. Employees have taken to the internet to call out just some of the abuses of the Chinese management. These reviews underscore the threat imposed by Chinese state-owned companies expanding their manufacturing presence here in the U.S. Even more concerning were the results of a year-long NBC News investigation of child labor in Africa. The report found that CRRC uses the mineral mica mined by underage children in Madagascar in its supply chain. CRRC trains arriving in Massachusetts and Illinois are filled with this material. Both Massachusetts and Illinois have strong track records of supporting workers' rights, yet they are allowing the Chinese Communist Party, a known human rights violator, to operate intimately with critical infrastructure in their communities. Local transit authorities and communities deserve to know the truth about their rail manufacturing partners. Senate will come to order. In December of 2019, the United States Congress passed bipartisan legislation that was signed by the President. The National Defense Authorization Act included language that banned federal dollars from going to procurements for state-owned and non-market economy countries. Currently, CRRC is the only rail manufacturer that meets that qualification. And now state legislatures with significant passenger rail infrastructure like Massachusetts, New York, and Illinois are all considering similar legislation to prevent new CRRC deals in their state. For cash-strapped municipal governments and transit authorities, a low bid from CRRC may seem like a perfect solution in replacing critical infrastructure. But if you dig deeper, you'll discover the dark underbelly of CRRC's incursion into the U.S. market. The cost of not addressing this and stopping this from happening is 
astronomical to our national security, the cost to our taxpayers. We have a platform here too, so I'm making a plea, you know, to my fellow Americans, the state and local bureaucrats, wake up. We are being played by the Chinese Communist Party. As CRRC aims to conquer the American rail car industry, the true impact of its dominance is yet to be seen. What is clear is the threat that this Chinese state-owned entity poses on our country's critical infrastructure. We must ask ourselves, is a good deal worth this much risk?